Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. I hope you are safe and well. This week I've rounded up nine watches which A, interest me, and B, I would buy this year if I could. And remember, not all are possible to get. I may not have the right contacts or profile with certain dealers, so all I can do is lust after them from afar. Others, though, would be available if I started sweet-talking my authorised dealers. I've gone for a cross-section of values, complications and brands, and not just the obvious ones. But yes, as you'd expect from this channel, it's a very personal list. I'm not trying to impress a load of Holt Horology Henrys, the staff of Houdinki, or even the guys on Scottish watches. Right. These are just the ones that I genuinely could see in the collection. There's also a lot of blue because I'm a boy and I like blue? And some of them are unapologetically expensive because we've well, got a dream, haven't you? And there are most definitely no Omegas because after the whole silver Snoopy debacle, I'm not getting any more of those. So this week on The Watch Guys, nine watches that I would buy if I could. Sound good with you? Okay, let's get on with it. In truth, 2022 has been a quiet year for purchases on The Watch Guys. And there's been a real focus on independent watchmakers, notably Corono, Studio Underdog and Kodoki. Obviously, there's been the odd Rolex and Patek. Hey, I'm only human. But compared to most years, I've been remarkably restrained. So this week, rather than profile a single watch in my collection in detail, I thought I'd share my wish list. The nine 2022 watches that have most interested me this year. Some will come to the collection in the future, I'm sure. Others are just flights of fancy. But I like them all. And now it's time for a wristwatch check. And under the blue jumper this week, we have... A Patek Philippe Grand Complication. This is a chronograph, it's a perpetual calendar, it's the 5271P, P remember for platinum, and it's a 41mm manual wind watch with 58 baguette diamonds around the bezel and lugs and also on the clasp. But despite sounding quite glitzy and show-offy, it's actually quite subtle. Okay, let's get straight into the list. And these are the nine watches that I would buy from 2022 if I could. And the first one is this, the IWC Lake Tahoe. Now this is a 44.5 millimeter white ceramic cased monster and I love it. IWC are doing some really interesting things at the moment. This year has been a real high point for them. They had that really cool, funky Formula One one. They had those Top Gun ones. You know, you've recently had the Mojave one and then you had that dark green one that looked fantastic. And this is also right up there because it looks very similar to the Inspiration 4, which was a series of four watches that were taken up into space on the Inspiration mission. They were white ceramic, they had blue dials, which I sort of prefer, but it really opened my eyes to IWC and IWC watches with white cases. And wouldn't you know it, a few months after I tried to get an Inspiration 4, this one came out. It's like they were reading my mind. Now this watch features the 69380 movement, it's self-winding, it's limited to a thousand units, and it's available for just under 10,000 pounds. The only catch with this one is that you can only get it from the boutiques and it is quite hard to get hold of. So you've got to go to a main boutique to get hold of one and hopefully you may be lucky if you put your name down on a list. My name's down on a list, I've heard absolutely nothing, so I have no idea if I'm ever going to get this watch. But that doesn't stop me wanting one. Next up is this, and this really is a monster. Very recently announced by Rolex is the Deep Sea Challenge. Now I know a lot of you are taking the mickey out of this watch because it is so enormous. It's 50 millimeters, but it's the first all titanium Rolex. And it also has a cool story because it's the watch that can go the deepest of any watch that's ever been created. You will never actually go as deep as this watch. You'll never actually be able to go down 11,000 plus meters with this, but if you did, it would still work. And James Cameron 
prove that. This is reference 126067. It's got the 3230 movement, it's self-winding. And even though I haven't actually had one on my wrist yet, I can safely say it is ginormous, this thing. It is almost too big to wear. However, because it's titanium, in theory, it will be lighter than the previous James Cameron Deep Sea. Another thing I really like is that it's got Mariana Trench written on the back and two special dates, the 23rd of January 1960 and the 26th of March 2012. Two historic dates in terms of deep diving to the Mariana Trench, one of Jacques Picard and the other one of James Cameron. Why in the name of all that's holy, Damien, would you want one of these watches? Well, I just like those real pioneering, different interesting watches and let's face it Rolex has gone properly off the reservation with this one and I have to applaud them for that. I've always liked the Sea Dweller anyway, this is the big daddy of the big daddies. The only downside of course is that it's nearly £22,000 which is officially a lot. You really are quite insane. Number three on the list is the first Patek. This is the newly announced 5712 Nautilus, the 1R. So it's the full rose gold one. The first time that the 5712 has been available in rose gold. And I said in my video on the new Patex that this one really caught my eye and boy, have I been getting excited about it since. It is absolutely glorious. It's a self-winding watch. It's 40 millimeters. It's not limited at all, but it does cost nearly 67 thousand pounds. But it is the famous 5712 complication, which means you get analog date, moon phases, and a power reserve indicator on the dial. And I've also noticed that Patek has made the dial even richer browner than before, even more rich and creamy and beautifully chocolatey than the standard 5711 Nautilus 1R. I have to say that anyone that gets this watch is an extremely lucky person, and hopefully it's coming to the Watch Guys collection soon. And now, wouldn't you know it, another rose gold beauty, this time from one of my favorite independents, Laurent Ferrier. Laurent Ferrier announced an enormous amount of attention this year when it decided to bring out the Grand Sport Tourbillon in rose gold. Now, just look at it. Look at this thing. It's 44 millimeter case in red gold. It's got an 80 hour power reserve. It's a manual winding tourbillon. It's got an exclusive in-house movement developed, assembled and adjusted by Laurent Ferrier. And it has a graduated brown opaline dial. And there are two distinct downsides for people wanting to pick this one up. Number one, there's only 24 of them in the world. And number two, the list price is 201,000 pounds. 200,000 pounds. Two to 200. Whew. So whilst I think this is one of the most glorious new watches of 2022, I doubt very much that one of these will be coming to my collection. It also weighs 310 grams. That's more than a Daytona Platinum. And the reason this incredible watch exists, well, it's to celebrate the 12th anniversary of Laurent Ferrier. Happy birthday, sir. And from one of the most expensive watches on my list to one of the best value. This is the Studio Underdog Strawberries and Cream. And regular viewers of the channel will know my love of Studio Underdog and its products. And wouldn't you know it, just like the charity Aubergine model, this one started out as a bit of a joke in the comments section of an Instagram post. And before you know it, hey presto, the Strawberries and Cream was announced. As you can see, the colors are beautiful. It fits perfectly with the Studio Underdog dial structure. And of course, since I've got all the others, how could I not love this one too? Like all the Studio Underdog watches, this one features the Seagull ST1901 movement. It's manual winding, and it's got a 38.5 millimeter steel case. But it was also only 575 pounds, so an absolute bargain. In my view, you either get Studio Underdog or you don't, and I very much get it. Number six on the list, and I've mentioned this before in a couple of videos, is the Vacheron Constantin 222, the reissue of one of Vacheron's 
most classic 70s models and it's in solid gold and I absolutely love it. There is very little chance of me getting one of these because my purchase history and my profile with Vacheron is not great enough. You can only get them from the main boutiques and you've got to have purchased a certain number of models and a certain level. So for me, this may have to be just a bit of a pipe dream or it might have to be a secondary purchase. This is a 37 millimeter yellow gold watch, self-winding and featuring the caliber 2455-2 movement. It's 52,000 pounds, but it's not limited. It's no limited number, but it will only be available for a certain time. This watch was created to celebrate the 222nd anniversary of Vacheron Constantin. And as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. 37 millimeters, fluted bezel, gold toned dials, straight hour markers, baton type hands, integrated bracelet, hexagonal central links. Wow. And of course, you've got that classic Maltese cross at the five o'clock position. I love the 222, I always have. I almost bought one of the classic ones and then this was announced. So uh, it looks like the gold one is gonna slip through my fingers, but in the future Vacheron may well do a steel one, which I'll also not be eligible for. Next up is another Patek, and of course, it's the newly announced 5811, the slightly larger white gold blue dialed Nautilus replacement. It's officially called the 5811-1G. It's self-winding and it's got a 41 millimeter case. It's also just over 55,000 pounds. That should sort out the men from the boys and it may also prevent some of the flipping of this watch, although I doubt it. This is no doubt going to be one of the hottest properties from Patek and as a consequence, it's gonna be exceptionally hard to get a hold of, but who knows? Maybe if I've been a good boy all year, Father Patek Christmas may well put one in my stocking. And number eight is a bit of a departure for me. I've not really got many Audemars Piguet watches. In fact, I've only got one, but I cannot fail to have been utterly seduced by the blue magnificence of this birthday special, this Royal Oak celebration in blue ceramic. Ooh, ooh, just love it honestly i just love it this one just looks exceptional it's a 41 millimeter watch it's got a ceramic case in blue it's self-winding and it features the 5134 movement it also costs 117 thousand pounds but it was created to celebrate the royal oak's 50th anniversary and as a consequence you've got that grand tapissier dial and you've got those three calendar subdials, moon phase, and it just looks utterly fantastic. Chances of me getting one? Uh, zero, zero chance. I don't have any real purchase history. I've got no profile whatsoever. Having a YouTube channel doesn't make any difference, just in case you were wondering, but yeah, wow, I absolutely love it. I love this watch, but um, this one is very much gonna stay in the pipe dream category. And if there are any dealers out there who want to offer me one for about £100,000 over list, you can f And here we are then at number nine, the last one on the list. And to be honest, this video was going to be eight watches, but just as I was about to record it, Patek Philippe launched another one. So I had to include it. This, my friends, is the 5271P slash 11P. And that means, folks, it is this watch, but with blue sapphires and a blue dial. And that is about the only grand complication 5271P that would trump my own watch. As you can see, it is an absolute symphony in blue. 41 millimeters, platinum case, manual winding. It's got that classic chronograph perpetual calendar movement that Patek is famous for and it is a stunner. There is also a red one which looks like this which I absolutely hate. Uh, I really hate the way that the blue moon phase is against the red dial and I think red is a little bit, mm, it's just a little bit too much. But the blue one, wow. Wow. This one is enhanced with 80 blue baguette cut sapphires, which is five carats in total. And it pays tribute 
to the iconic Grand Complication. This is a fantastic watch. If I didn't already have a 5271, I would be probably banging down my Patek dealer to get one of these. Downside, it is, and I'll wait for you to sit down and have a glass of water. The price of this watch is 281,000 pounds. 281,000 pounds. That's a 40,000 pound premium for sapphires over diamonds. An incredible watch, and let's face it folks, an incredible price tag, but we are talking about a list of watches that interest me and that I love, and I couldn't fail to put this in as soon as I saw it. And my list is at an end. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know the ones that you think really should have been on the list, but I completely forgot about, or ones that I missed. I'm very interested to hear what's on your lists as well. Please leave your comments. Let me see which ones really took your fancy in 2022. Well, thank you for watching this episode on the nine watches from 2022 that I would love to buy if I could. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you found it entertaining and interesting. And if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please subscribe, leave comments and likes, and there'll be another episode, hopefully, next week.